What is up you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today we are in the brand new 2025 Lexus UX 300, courtesy of Bobby Ray Hall Lexus in Mechanicsburg, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. So today we're in this one because the UX has an all new powertrain for 2025. You guys probably noticed I said UX 300, not UX 250 like I said in last year's model review, but legendary reliability, of course, coming with the UX. This is based on the Toyota Prius after all, excellent MPGs as well. So ultimately in this video, we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking, steering feel, ride quality, sound system, exhaust clip, all that fun stuff. So having said all of that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing and so as you can imagine there are several different trim levels for the 2025 ux 300 hybrid first one being the base starting at thirty-seven thousand four hundred ninety dollars premium which is the one we are in today starting at forty thousand six hundred ninety dollars f sport design for forty one thousand four forty and the f sport handling for forty five thousand nine fifty five by the way that was all pricing for the front wheel drive configuration if you wanted to add all wheel drive you can do that simply add one thousand five hundred and seventy dollars to any of those prices but regardless of trim level that you go with the power plant is going to be the same powering the beast is a two liter naturally aspirated four cylinder with two electric motors putting out 196 horsepower so last year's model put out 181 horsepower so you got a little bit of a bump there 139 pound feet of torque power sent to front wheels or all wheels through a ecvt zero to 60 time coming in at approximately 7.9 seconds for the all-wheel drive and so last year's model by the way that came in at 8.6 so a substantial jump there as well for the better eight seconds flat for the front wheel drive top speed if you're interested 110 miles per hour with mpg numbers coming in at 45 in the city 41 on the highway for the front wheel drive that is better as well than last year's model 44 in the city 40 then on the highway for the all-wheel drive taking regular unleaded fuel probably one of the very few lexuses that actually take regular unleaded fuel so that's pretty exciting but before we do any kind of fun acceleration test here in the ux i did want to mention to you guys the drive modes drive modes are actually it's a stock little thing still just above the gauges there there's also an ev mode just behind the shifter but drive modes will include normal eco sport and ev adjusting things like the throttle response the steering sensitivity the all-wheel drive system engagement and the gauge colors actually as well a little bit so now that we got all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and find a straightaway let's put the acceleration here to the test and let's see how quickly we get our new 2025 ux 300 hybrid here up to speed all right here's a straightaway in three two one go it's not bad yeah, that's not bad. Certainly not gonna have any issues emerging onto the highway. It's not the quickest thing in the world. Zero to 60 in eight seconds or 7.9 is not the quickest, but it's not bad. It's not something that would actually bother me. So that's plenty of an acceleration for the UX 300 hybrid here. And also wanted to mention to you guys, uh, usually around this time, I also do a paddle shifter test. Paddle shifters are available for the uh, F Sport handling only. So that is why we don't have them today. So I will not be doing that paddle shifter test for that reason. But anyways, now that I haven't got that out of the way, as always, braking is equally important. So up front, you will find 12 inch ventilated front discs and the back 11.1 inch solid rear discs. As far as that 60 zero stop, distance goes that comes in at 117 feet as far as the braking feel goes it's definitely a little bit on the firmer side but let me get back to the 117 foot number because that is a sports sedan number that is brilliant typically with compact cars you find uh mid 120s or lower 120s but 117 feet that is definitely a very very good braking number right there now since we're actually going a little bit of speed here just hitting the brakes it's on the firmer side of things, 100%. So I love that. It is not a soft braking feel like you traditionally would find in an SUV. It is definitely a sports sedan type of braking feel. So 100%, well done Lexus. But that touching on suspension and handling, up front you're gonna get a McPherson strut front suspension, in the back independent multi-link rear suspension, gas pressurized shock absorbers of course, and an adaptive damping suspension if 
you go with the F-Sport handling that we don't have with us here today. But if you wanted the best ride quality and the best handling, go with the F-Sport handling because what that adaptive damping suspension actually does is it monitors each shock absorber individually, not only adjusting to the road imperfections, giving you a smoother ride, but it is gonna tighten up that suspension during heavy cornering, giving you the best of both worlds, the better handling there too. So uh, usually what I notice the most is the ride quality. So if you want the best ride quality, go with the F-Sport handling, believe it or not. So that's how that's gonna work. But overall, my short little test drive here today although we don't have the adaptive damping suspension right now it has been perfectly fine in our short little test drive now one thing uh, a little off topic here but the accelerator pedal the gas pedal here is uh vibrating a little bit that's something i don't remember in last year's model so it's different um it's not something that personally would bother me it's just a little bit weird it's the first thing i noticed when i started driving this one so i didn't want to forget to mention it i don't know why it's vibrating but anyways it is what it is as far as uh, steering feel goes I love it. It is something I like with the Prius too. Like their new steering feel is just brilliant. I don't know why. It's leaning on the heavier side of things so it does instantly point you in the direction that you want to go. And again, depending upon the drive mode that you put it in, it's either going to be heavier or more of a looser steering feel. So sport driving mode is going to be even heavier. If you take it out of that, it's going to loosen up a little bit. So a little bit something for everybody, but it does tend to lean on the heavier side of things what you guys know i love but as far as cabin noise goes we're going 30 miles per hour right now maybe a little bit of road noise but no wind noise whatsoever so i am a huge fan of that very serene cabin there touching our rear visibility i can see 100 perfectly fine out the back typically with this type of shape you're not going to have any issues there so i do like that rain sensing windshield wipers do come standard though on the ux so whenever this thing detects any kind of mist or rainfall it's going to automatically turn on those windshield wipers for us so also big fan of that excellent turning radius since i just did a little 180 turn there so i love that as well and if you wanted a head-up display that goes for 900 if you're interested that's going to project your speed speed limit and safety features up onto your windshield yet again assisting with forward visibility but that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review you guys let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new lexus ux 300 hybrid all right so here she is you guys the new 2025 lexus ux 300 hybrid finished in eminent white pearl in case you were curious of our exact exterior color name that we had on this one with us here today but as always let's go ahead and start with where the ux is made taking a look at the vin first character is the letter j indicating that the ux is still built and assembled in japan as it should be i love that but taking a look at the front grille there it is a lexus spindle front grille that does come standard you got some front air curtains to the sides helping direct air around the wheel and tire combination of course also to the sides though by led headlights with led daytime running lights they come standard of course as well along with the automatic feature and automatic high beams so automatic high beams meaning if you have your high beams on at night and it senses the vehicle coming in the opposite direction automatically dims them back to low beams then when that vehicle is gone it's going to automatically bounce it back up the high beams for you there so love that feature personally but anyways that pretty much rounds out the front end i like it got some nice aluminum finish on the lower portion of that front lip there as well but that pretty much rounds out the front end. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the side. All right, so but now since we are around to the side of the UX, aluminum roof rails do come standard. You guys can see those up top. Chrome window surrounds coming standard as well. Body color, power adjustable side mirrors. They will be heated. That comes standard with LED integrated turn signals. So gotta love that. Body colored fender surrounds. That's something I wanted to kind of emphasize because with most SUVs, at least, I know this isn't necessarily an SUV, but they will finish that in matte black. So I do like that they have a body colored finish personally, but F Sport badging found on the front fenders. If you go with one of those F Sport trims, of course, 18 inch double five spoke alloys coming standard for the base and premium trims. That's what you guys are looking at, of course. And then F Sport specific 18 inch alloys, more of a sporty design, as you can imagine, coming with the F Sport trim levels. But that pretty much rounds out the side profile. Let's now go ahead and swing around to the back. All right, so now let's see our around to the back of the UX all the way to the top by colored shark fin antenna just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light just below that rear window wiper led tail lights with the cool wing design just like last year i love that and let me actually get up a little bit closer because i always like to show you guys it's one of the coolest tail light designs because it's like a little wing to the side of it so it kind of makes a statement i love it it's different but just below it all you will find a single exhaust outlet it is of course tucked away and this is a hybrid so i don't know if this is going to work but we're going to try as always here is that exhaust clip.
All right, so now since we are around to the back of the UX, when it comes to opening that rear tailgate, it is a power tailgate coming standard across the board. Hands-free power tailgate is going to be optional, but there is a button on the tailgate itself. There's a button on the key fob then as well to go ahead and open it. But once opened up, cargo capacity behind that second row comes in at 17.1 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, there is a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down for quite a bit of extra space then if you needed it. There are tie-down anchors back there. There's grocery bag hooks as well. 12 volt power outlet. Of course, you got the Lexus first aid kit. I always like seeing those back there. Cargo lighting, of course, it's LED cargo lighting too, by the way. And then if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor, you are going to find a good bit of in-floor storage. And then if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor, you're going to find even more in-floor storage. So it's probably the only vehicle I know of that has kind of dual layers to their in-floor storage. So that is pretty cool. But so then making our way up to the rear legroom, that is going to come in at 33.1 inches for reference i am an even six feet tall this is how much space i had in the back there rear center armrest with cup holders does come standard rear ventilation coming standard as well and then just below that rear ventilation you will find dual rear usb charging ports so always love seeing those for the rear passengers but then making our way up to the front seats eight weight power adjustable front seats do come standard new lux upholstery is going to be the standard finish heated and ventilated front seats for the premium trim level and up and then you're going to get some enhanced bolstering of course for the f sport handling trim level only those are my favorite seats by the way the f sport handling because it, it is enhanced bolstering but they are just so comfortable um, not that these are bad these are excellent as well either seat configuration you go with they're going to be great but the f sport handling that's on a different level completely but then take a good look at this steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping it is going to be leather wrapped coming standard of course it is manually adjustable and then a heated steering wheel actually goes for 150 dollars we got that option that is uh that button's located just to the right of the shifter there but then make our way to the startup let me start by showing you guys the key you do have your lexus logo although it's covered up on the one side when you flip it over lock unlock and the button to pop the rear tailgate there but it is all keyless entry with a push button start so all i'm going to do here is simply put my front of the brake and press that engine start button located just to the left of the climate control information there and so once started up there is two different gauge clusters available for the ux a seven inch digital screen is going to come on that base trim level however for the premium trim level and up you're going to get a 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster so that is what you guys are looking at there are a couple different loadouts you can kind of scroll through if you wanted to and of course when you change the drive modes that's going to adjust the color like i was saying earlier sport driving mode is going to give you a bunch of red hues eco driving mode is going to be kind of blue and the normal driving mode is going to be gray so it's going to change up a little bit there but outside temperature how many miles you have left until you hit empty uh, pretty much everything you could possibly want on a digital gauge cluster but now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality power moonroof is going to come on the premium trim level and up so i'm glad we got at least a premium trim level because i always like that extra view with the gopro uh auto dimming rear view mirror with homelink controls for the premium and f sport handling configurations wireless phone charger goes for 75 dollars if you wanted that that's located just in front of the cup holders there washi material it's one of my favorite parts about this one the ux specifically has this it's a, a japanese material located just above the passenger side glove box uh, behind the infotainment screen also a little bit on the left there too but i like that because there's another japanese element being the door handles they're designed to be kind of inspired by the samurai sword so that is pretty cool too so a couple different japanese elements for you so i'm a big fan of that but just in front of the shifter again you got that wireless phone charger you got a couple cup holders surrounding the shifter though i wouldn't have minded if they finished that a little bit differently it's kind of just a uh, it's a smooth finish, but it's just a gray basic finish. I wouldn't mind it like a texturized design to that. I think that would look a lot better there. And then within the center armrest, you do have a decent amount of storage. There. There's a 12 volt power outlet in there and a USB charging port as well. But overall interior quality is okay. What really makes it good though is the washing material and the samurai stored inspired door handles. But that's just what I like. But now let's go ahead and take a look at the infotainment screen. Eight inch color touchscreen display coming for the base premium and F Sport design that's what you guys are looking at and then there's going to be a 12.3 inch color touchscreen display for the f sport handling that is going to be optional on the premium i believe i had that one last year but bluetooth and audio streaming does come standard wireless android auto apple carplay coming standard got a factory navigation system up there as well along with your radio information and so when it comes to the sound systems there are two of them six speakers is going to come on the base premium and f sport design and then you have a 10 speaker sound system for the 
F Sport handling. So having said that, we got the six speaker sound system with us here today. So let's go ahead and turn on the radio. Let's see what we got playing this morning and let's test out the clarity of this one. It's okay. It was probably above average for a six speaker sound system. I'll say that the bass was pretty good. Clarity was okay. It's what you would expect a six speaker sound system to sound like. So it was just an okay sound system for me. I don't have a problem with it. I probably went a little bit more personally, but it'll get the job done. But last thing I want to mention you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put the UX in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board. Of course, with this being a hybrid, it's going to make that kind of hybrid sound as well. But as always, that is going to lead us into safety. And so first, let me start by saying IIHS top safety pick, which is a good start right there. Front side side curtain airbags do come standard. Driver and passenger knee airbags up front as well. In the back, you're going to have latch, aka lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system but also coming standard lexus safety system plus 3.0 and yes that is an upgrade from last year's model last year was 2.5 so this year is 3.0 so just to let you know that but anyways pre-collision system with pedestrian detection lane trace assist lane departure alert with steering assist road sign assist dynamic radar cruise control proactive driving assist and a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert all that comes standard so you gotta love that so Overall, when it comes to my final thoughts, excellent MPGs, of course, you really can't beat Toyota's hybrid technology. And what goes along with that hybrid technology is excellent reliability as well. If you take a look at Consumer Reports, some of the two most reliable cars that they have in there are the Prius and this thing. So Toyota and Lexus are always known for incredible reliability with their naturally aspirated engines, but it's almost even better with their hybrid configuration. So I just wanted to say that F Sport seats are great and even these seats are plenty comfortable as well. I like that. I love all the JDM touches as well. Japanese domestic market, I should say. So that's like the washing material and the samurai sword inspired door handles, things like that. Big fan of that. Really the only room for improvement I can think of personally for me would be the uh, finishes surrounding the shifter and the cup holders here. Wouldn't have minded if that was finished in, uh, I don't know, anything but just a basic plastic basically. So it could be a texturized finish with a nice design to it. Something like that would probably get the job done. Or even gloss black I would like better than this particular finish that we have here today. But really that is the only thing I got on this thing. This is an incredible reliable car with excellent MPGs, an excellent commuter car. Let me know what you guys think of the UX 300 hybrid in the comment section below. That's about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel. Before it gets to YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button. If you're into new car reviews, that is what we do here on this channel. After all, do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.